Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, Dopa for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. If you're new to this channel, you're specially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Alright, let's get started. So today we're going to be dealing with a topic that is also very key foundational and vital to physiology transport across cell membranes if you remember very carefully so that one of those underlying principles of physiology we talked about it the title of the lecture is seven secrets of physiology check it and go through it some other time so one of them states that there is controlled exchange okay across cell membranes and between between compartments there's controlled exchange now that controlled exchange has to do with transport across cell membrane so the principles the laws that govern the control of the exchange is what we're going to be dealing with and remember that also another underlying principle is that physiological processes are dictated the laws of physics and chemistry okay so now exchange controlled exchange you know generally in life that without exchange there is a problem we can't exist without exchange how now that's why you have market you have a system of exchange money was invented to exchange value Imagine that there's no market, there's no means of people exchange, nobody can survive, okay? Because no person can be an island. The same thing with cells. They always need to exchange materials in and out and so on. So now we're going to be looking at that. So basically there are two broad types of transport across cell membrane. One of them, passive, passive transport and another one active active transport okay so now you ask yourself what is the difference between them okay we're going to be dealing with them very systematically so the difference between these two is based on the relationship with energy that is powering their movement or their transport now a lot of people confuse and say passive transport does not use energy for transport why active transport uses energy it's wrong any movement something is moving it no matter how you look at it there is something that is causing every form of movement as you see my hand moving like this energy is moving it the difference is the type of energy not that this one there's no energy because it's called passive there's still energy let me give you a good example how so you understand now you've seen a hill okay like this going up going down when you are climbing the hill for example or let's let's use a car okay a car is going up the hill you must need to throttle down very well so they can go if you don't throttle down you will not be able to climb that hill actually if the hill is very steep but if the car is coming down if you if you know how to drive you would have experienced it you don't even need to put your hand your 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 foot on the throttle okay or they call it accelerator the americans it just goes like that so the difference between the two is the energy that is powering them when it's coming down the force or the energy of gravity pushes it okay so you don't need to throttle down and use the energy from the fuel and the engine of the car but when you are going up you need so that's the same thing applies to passive and active transport okay so we're going to be dealing with them very very well i'm going to start with passive transport all right 
So passive transport. Passive transport has to do with the movement of molecules, substances. We are dealing with molecules. You know, physiology is chemicals across from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration okay so it's diffusion diffusion that's what passive transport is talking about diffusion okay it's all about diffusion Although we have special types of trans passive transport that don't have to deal with diffusion. We'll still talk about that. So now, why are we talking about from higher concentration to lower concentration? Why is it moving? Look at this diagram. These are molecules concentrated in this place. Okay? In this part of this vessel. You put this water, you put a solute concentrated here. Within, after you leave it for some minutes, it spreads evenly across. What happens is that these particles, they've moved, okay, and spread themselves evenly. What made them move? So the energy that made them move, okay, is the natural, inherent energy that every molecule has. Physicists, they call it heat. Heat. Inherent energy. Okay? Every molecule has it. So, that's what is responsible for Brownian motion. Have you heard of Brownian motion? You've heard of it in physics. Zigzag movement. Particles. They are always moving. Every particle always moves. Zigzag like that they have inherent energy so when they are concentrated like this they will be hitting themselves at a higher frequency as they hit themselves they will bounce the more so the, the more they are closer together the more frequent they hit themselves and the more they bounce away from themselves that bouncing away from themselves is what now makes it spread so that's what happens that's what is responsible for diffusion why it's going to as if it's moving from concentrated to less concentrated area it's because of that natural and the more you apply heat the faster they they move because they gain more energy and they move faster in that zigzag they have inherent energy so that's what happens in diffusion so there are, but there are two types of diffusion we're going to be looking at them after this break All right, welcome back. So now, just a brief recap. Passive, active, the difference is energy. So um, this passive transport has a nickname. It's downhill, downhill. It's a nickname, so put downhill transport, okay? That means it's just like going down the hill. Then this one, uphill. All right, so now we've talked about diffusion lights along concentration gradient that word gradient hmm, has to do with difference so don't get confused concentration gradient sometimes it could be electrical gradient where electrical charges are more moving to where electrical charges are less so gradient means difference okay just for you to so i don't get confused along that means it's moving from the natural way something moves is from higher to lower okay higher to lower so that's what passive is talking about moving from where substances are higher the concentration is higher to where it's lower because of what i've explained all right so now let's go to the types of passive transport basic fundamental types you have one of them that's diffusion can be divided broadly into two. You have simple and facilitated. Simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion. What do we mean by simple diffusion? Simple diffusion 
No, this is across cell membranes, okay? Keep that at the back of your mind. So simple diffusion is talking about the transport of substances across the cell membrane through the natural openings in the cell membrane. Cell membranes, they have some natural openings, okay? So that's it. It's simple. That's why it's called simple. True, normal, little, little openings. That's what it uses to move through. And they are divided into two. You have the simple movement that is across the lipid bilayer. Okay? Across the lipid. The lipid layer. You know the cell membrane. It's called lipid bile. It has a lot of lipid. The hydrophobic, hydrophilic head. The hydrophobic tail. Then another part like this, the tail joined together. So this part is the hydrophobic part, okay? <laughs> lipid bile. So across the lipid layer, then you have the one across protein layer. So there are substances that easily cross the cell membrane just like that, because they are what? Lipid soluble. So the ones that use transport across the lipid layer just like that, in the simple diffusion they are lipid soluble example is oxygen example another example is carbon dioxide okay then alcohol and so on. nitrogen they are lipid soluble. so they just pass through the cell membrane easily like that but there are other substances that like water and other ions like sodium ion chloride ions those ions they are water soluble they are not lipid so they can't just pass through like that but they actually diffuse very fast so people wonder how come these things that are lipid insoluble pass through the cell membrane easily till they now discovered that there are actually some channels that are specially dedicated to those molecules okay you have water channels you have ion channels so this protein layer is talking about the fact that those channels are proteins, okay? So you have channels, water channels, H2O, water channels, then ion channels that aid the simple diffusion, okay? So you have water, then ions like sodium, potassium, so you have potassium ion channel, chloride ion channel, and so on. So that's how it happens, simple diffusion. Then now, let's talk about facilitated diffusion. What, does, what do you understand by the word facilitated? Facil to facilitate means to help. These ones are moving by themselves, simple diffusion. No aid, no special help, So except just this needs channels but no special help but facilitated is talking about the fact that a special protein is dedicated to help the molecules to pass through why because those molecules are bigger all these molecules water molecules sodium they are, they are very small they can easily pass through but bigger molecules something like organic molecules like glucose for example it's a chemical compound okay complex made up of several elements so it's big it cannot easily just pass through small small channels so there's a dedicated protein to help carry it across so those proteins they are called carrier proteins okay or transport proteins that's, that's the difference, facilitated and simple. So it's just like a door, a door like this. Hmm? And you, you walk through the door. You open the door and walk through. Then someone else, because the person is very big, cannot easily carry himself, now uses maybe a, a, a trolley or a wheelchair and someone now pushes the person and passes through the door so that is just to paint a picture of 
facilitated, something has to carry it, a protein. They're called carrier proteins. Okay? And now, an example is of a carrier protein for glucose. Very common. Very common in future lot. It's called GLUT. Okay? It's called glucose transport. GLU for glucose, then T for transport. Glucose transporter. The protein that carries glucose across the cell membrane. Okay? Facilitated diffusion. But also remember that it's going from where it is higher to where it is lower because active transport also uses carrier protein so but the difference is that it's now going from where it is lower to where it is higher up here lower to higher concentration is lower but it's now moving to where it's already higher so it you need extra energy okay that's active transport. we're going to be doing that in other lectures in front okay so this is basically what you need to know about diffusion passive transport okay so in the part two we're going to be dealing with special types of passive transport they also don't use a different source of energy let me just give you the secret this active transport uses atp adenosine triphosphate we're going to be dealing with it very in detail okay so now that's what you need to know so in the part two we will deal with special types of passive transport don't go anywhere don't miss that lecture see you in the next video